Welcome back. I'm Andrew Donovan, joined live by Congressman John Katko, elected for a third term on Tuesday. Congressman, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Two more years. You ready? Oh, yes, absolutely. Uh, my first question is, were you surprised that the results were so close, a six-point difference? Uh, not really. I mean, we knew uh, the headwinds we were facing, a lot of them were beyond our control, and uh, we still ended up winning three out of the four counties uh, resoundingly and, and uh, very, very close in Onondaga County. So all in all, it was a good night, great night. You've been very busy, but what lessons are you able to take away from the campaign and specifically from your opponents? Well, I mean, uh, the same lessons I always take away. I listen to what my opposition is, is arguing, what they're talking about, and, uh, and I'll, I'll take that into consideration moving forward, like I always do. One of the criticisms of your last term was your, um, your, you weren't holding town halls in the way people want to see them, the open forums free to everybody. Do you envision yourself holding those free open door, any question, no question off limit events this term? I've done that repeatedly. I, I have subject matter town halls all the time and the doors are open, people are in, they're announced and uh, we open up questions at the end, of course. I've done, been doing it all along and I'm going to continue to do that. Your opponent says you already have a chance to prove yourself. She says that you uh, have already said that you would support legislation to protect the Mueller investigation. With this recent change in Attorney General, is that something that you're looking at? Well, first of all, the election's over, so I'll respond to your question. And your question is, uh, well, I do that. There's nothing that has happened in the Mueller investigation that's been impeded. I know Bob Mueller, and I've served in administration with him, and he, uh, uh, he would make noise and make it very clear if there was any problems. He has indicted many people. He's convicted many people. The investigation is going on just fine. If he signals at all that there's a concern, we'll definitely act on it for sure. Another shooting today, another mass shooting. A lot of, a lot of people have died. Uh, it almost seems like this country is being desensitized by these. People aren't shocked anymore. What can you do in Congress? I know you've talked a lot about, about gun laws, but I mean, again, what do we do to stop this yeah. now? I haven't talked, I've, already, I've acted. Um, I introduced le legislation, which could turn out to be landmark legislation, to anticipate the needle in the haystack. The individual like this individual should never have guns at all, not just any certain type of weapon, no guns. And uh, that, 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 that uh, legislation has bipartisan support, and hopefully we'll get it moving and then get back to Congress. And, uh, we're going to keep moving on that. I think what the media can do is to stop publishing the individuals' names and identities. And, and uh, I think a lot of these people want to go out in a blaze of glory like this guy did. It sounds like he ended up committing suicide. And, uh, but he probably knew that his name was going to be out there in the media. So maybe the media can take a role by tamping down the amount of discussions they have of who the shooter is, unless it's highly relevant. And so they don't get, this, they don't, they don't get their 15 minutes of fame. And uh, we'll keep doing legislation and try and stop the stuff as well. But are we taking too long? I mean, these mass shootings happen every single week. Are, aren't we at some sort of national emergency where something has to change tomorrow? Well, yeah. I mean, I think we, we definitely have to act. But at the same token, you've got to keep in mind, violent crime in this country has, has been going down steadily for 25 years. And I was a big part of that as a prosecutor. And violent crime has continued to plummet. So we have done an awful lot over the years. And I was at the forefront of that, taking guns out of the hands of individuals and prosecuting people. There's things we can do. And, and we got to, and the, the more we can depoliticize it and just attack the problem in a bipartisan manner, the better we're going to be off. We saw a lot of nasty rhetoric during the campaign. We saw the president have some aggressive words for, for Democrats yesterday from uh, the White House. You've preached bipartisanship. Mm -hmm. How do you spread that to your colleagues? How do you bring your approach to everybody. Like I do every day when I go to Congress, they understand that I'm not always with my party and uh, I, they also understand that I very much believe in my bipartisanship. I never submit a bill without a Democrat on it and I'm going to be neck deep in the Problem Solvers Caucus again, which is an equal number of Democrats and Republicans. And, I, and now more than ever I'm going to be beating that drum because we, we have to get past this. And uh, there are some Democrats uh, now who are going to be in a leadership position who I'm friends with, very good friends with, and uh, I think we're going to continue to try and uh, strike a, a stake in the middle because that's what we have to do. And you spoke to Anthony Brindisi, the projected winner in the neighboring district. And I have. Already I have. an active bipartisan worker. Uh, there's no question if he ends up coming out on top, we can work with him, but that race hasn't been decided yet. All right, Congressman yeah. Katko, thank, thank you, you so much. much. We'll talk yeah. to you over the next two years a lot. Sure. We'll be back in just a few minutes. You're watching News Channel 9.